Well, hello, Nautical Ventures staff and family. So this is an introductory video that I wanted to put out for the beginning of 2021 and potentially doing um, a couple of these throughout the course of the year. Uh, not trying to overload your inbox with my unfortunate face, but um, it dawned on me uh, that we have grown to a size that for me to individually sit and to have the conversations with what's happened, where we're going, and what we've done is impossible, unfortunately. Heck, we bring in so many people now that I don't even necessarily know everybody right out of the gate. It takes me a minute to even learn the names, positions, and, and what people are doing. So it came into my little simple brain that, well, why don't I put out a quick, brief little message every so often that gives sort of an update from uh, of the 50,000 foot level uh, as to what Nautical Ventures is doing, what we have done, what our goals are, what we've accomplished. And of course, all these are thanks to the people that are involved in it. And then that's all you guys as well. So um, I wanted to first start off by kind of concluding 2020. So we had some benchmarks set and we made them all. Uh, we didn't have a single goal that we had put forth that was not executed. And it is only possible to be executed from the vast staff that we have that are all doing their jobs uh, very well and all the sales the opportunities that were capitalized on, all the service opportunities that were capitalized on. And it gave us the opportunity to, to hit all the targets that, that Roger and Jeff had, had put out. So first off, that goes 100% to you guys and gals. And uh, it's a great appreciation that we feel. And 2020, as we all know, was a, a heck of an interesting year. The started off okay, then it went into a, a horrible lockdown, terrible mode that we all really had to struggle to get through. And then to everyone's surprise, the boating industry just came absolutely booming back through the, the balance of the year. And I think we all felt it. And unfortunately, we all felt the strain of that. You know, the, the sales are fantastic, but with more sales, more people means more service, more work, more problems, etc. cetera. Uh, in, the same time domain, uh, Nautical Ventures in the Fort Lauderdale location uh, acquired a new facility. If you haven't had the opportunity to see or you don't know about it, I'm, I'm not sure how, you might be living under a rock, but what we did is we purchased a building off of U.S. Federal Highways, the old BMW building just north of 17th Street, and it's been so far uh, a phenomenal endeavor and an amazing location. We did officially move over from the 50 and 70 South Bryan locations to this facility in February 1st-ish, and then we're still transitioning and getting kind of the balance of the things done. Once we're finished here, I took some videos of the building when we first acquired it, and then I'll do some final videos again so you guys can see the entire transformation. So to say that we had a lot going on in 2020 is, is possibly the understatement of the year. Uh, lots of growth, lots of change, lots of exciting things. And then, of course, we're now full steam into 2021. And, you know, what are, what, what's down the pike for Nautical Ventures and what do we plan on doing going forward? So I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up. So first is the congratulations on a phenomenal 2020. Greatly appreciated. But, hey, that's in the rear view. What's forward? So we're having some supply chain issues, if you guys don't know. And it's coming from our manufacturers. Uh, Diego and I sat down with our crown line rep, Patrick Schmitty, and we're ordering 2022 boats with no indication of when they're actually going to be arriving. Uh, we know it's the end of 2021 when we're even going to get these 2022 products, and we have to because all their production is sold out. This problem is uh, mirrored worldwide, and everyone's having the same issue, and uh, certainly you guys understand that and, and you see it as well. Uh, but this is something that we're going to have to deal with going through 2021. And I want you to be prepared. It looks like boat shows are opening back up. So we are having uh, some events that are now going. You have everyone on the West Coast, even the North, and it looks like Palm Beach is happening. So we're kind of hopefully going to get back to some normality, but it will not change the supply issue. Uh, what does this mean for you? It means that we need to be very cognizant of what we're selling and the price that we're selling at. Why is that? Well, supply and demand put as bluntly and simply as I can. The fact is, is that until these factories can get their stainless steel providers to be you know, back in line where they don't have to shut down because of a COVID outbreak for a week and a half, and then no one's shooting glass and you know, et cetera, et cetera, with all their parts, widgets and pieces and engines and so on and so forth, there's no reason that we need to be giving anything away. 
Um, uh, do I mean that you need to hit someone full MSRP, no exceptions, no questions asked? No, of course not. You know, discuss it with your sales manager, discuss it with your team leaders, and let's you know uh, approach the deals pragmatically. But that being said, is us starting off with the mentality of what's the best price uh, is not necessary. You know, this is not shifted in a way where we're way overloaded, where we have too much and we're terrified and we need to get through stock. So let's try to approach it with that mindset of that supply is limited, period. Everyone knows that. And so we should be holding better margins. And the fact is, is the advantage we offer is that we can actually sell you something. So we need to keep that in mind as our sales teams and sales organizations are moving through 2021 because all the managers know, and I'm sure have echoed to you guys and gals, that there is no short-term uh, pipe tap opening back up. We're going to be short for the balance of the year. So uh, administratively, what are our goals for 2021? Well, we have uh, Nada, the CFO, running some uh, analytics and some math here, but it, we think that uh, with the projected incoming vessels, we should be able to sustain a 20% growth across each location. So this factors in Axopars, D'Antonio's, Beneteau, Sailfish, Tidewaters, Starcrafts, etc., we believe that we should execute a 20% growth. Uh, so from a sales management perspective, we need to echo this, of course, month over month. We need to run the forecasts and the histories that we've had from the years before. And then, of course, we need to plan on how are we going to achieve this goal. It should be possible. I don't think that we're going to run into any issues. So uh, also a special shout out for the year 2020 to the entire West Coast. The turnaround that the leadership team has done there is, is mind-blowing. They started off with a huge deficit. They started off with a huge rack of problems. And you guys and, and that team over there, uh, from a, a P&L perspective as well as a client satisfaction uh, perspective, have just blown all the expectations away in an absolutely positive light. And we want to give you a special thanks for something like that because without you guys, we couldn't do it. The simple fact is, is that Jeff, myself, and Roger are located on the other coast. So it makes it very difficult for us to be hands-on in the day-to-day -day on the West Coast. But we are exceptionally proud of everyone that's on that side and the leadership team that have found a way to continue to increase sales, to get out of a deficit, to turn the store around completely, and to actually make it a largely profitable endeavor that we are really, really happy to be a part of. And of course, we see no signs of slowing down either because every time that we do get involved, it seems that continued progress is made, that we continue to make more and more streamlined uh, decisions and procedures and protocols. And, and it seems that it's getting better and better is a simpler way of saying it, right? And it's not getting worse. So from that perspective, uh, we, we owe you and that team a, a huge debt of gratitude and you know keep that up because it's, it's, it allows us to focus on different and other things that continue to perpetuate the growth of Nautical Ventures. Now, back into 2021, the, the new uh, store in Fort Lauderdale is proving to be what was missing and again i have to we got to give a nod to the west coast because we've always been destination driven we've never really known the value of drive-by traffic we've never had it we've always been off the beaten path more or less we've always been heavy into uh, internet digital marketing radio advertising different way to drive clients to us and we've always used the product lines as the primary focus to bring people in for tenders kayaks boats etc and now we've shifted this mechanism to we just get 50 to 60,000 views a day and we don't have to do anything except be here. So we already see <clears throat> how this is affecting sales. It's affecting the amount of people that are coming in. And we're really excited as we get more established, more inventory, and we iron out the, the operational uh, shortfalls and limitations of a different platform, which is here. And we're really excited to see what that's going to continue to grow and continue to yield for the balance of 2021. And we are uh, pretty confident that it's going to be like the West Coast and that it's a strong lead driving force. We're not backing down on any of the other boat shows, digital marketing, offsite events, etc. But we're also including this new uh, uh, variable that didn't exist before, which is only going to move the sales needle. So the question for us always is, what can we all do as a team to move the sales needle? And um, I want to leave with, let's go, let's wrapping up kind of your entry into 2021 updates. 
that's kind of where we are. The marina is uh, on this side as well. The marina is go undergoing a, a massive renovation. Uh, Jeff is spearheading that, of course, with the entire marina team. And if you happen to have been there before and been there now, you can see that it's still chaos. They're redoing caved-in concrete. They're redoing seawalls. They're redoing electric issues. They're, it's undergoing a huge, a huge project right there, but that is continuing to track. So the goal being that at some point in the future, it looks like they're going to uh, move a drive stack over there and they're going to repurpose this entire yard, do more service out of there. So I will let somebody that's more educated in that, specifically Roger or Jeff, and next time I do this, I'll, I'll, I'll loop one of them into it. So they can give you kind of a feel for what those project and targets are and what those goals are. That way you just kind of can feel like you understand what we're doing as a whole. So what's important for me uh, in, in the management position is that I was speaking with one of the staff here, and uh, what he said kind of resonated with me. He said, I really liked it when we were a small mom and pop shop, and I feel that we're, we've moved away from that, or we're moving away from that. And I think that it's important that everybody kind of understands where we are with that. And the fact is, is that we're not a small mom and pop shop anymore. We're also not a Marine Max. We're kind of somewhere in the middle, right? We're somewhere in the middle with locations. We're somewhere in the middle with sales. There's a lot of people that are a lot bigger than us, and there's a lot of people that are a lot smaller than us. And so the question is, is how do you maintain the fundamentals that got you to where you are, but continue to grow and provide more and gives us the ability to do more in the future? And that resonates with sales manager and sales men's, period. That's where that's going to have to come from. That's where it has to go, where it needs to continue to track. That is based upon how are we conducting ourselves with each client interface. Are we maintaining that we're relationship driven? Are we maintaining that we're here to facilitate a service? Are we maintaining that we're excited and passionate about our product? Are we maintaining that this is a complete uh, and utter non-obligation, but rather an opportunity that we're excited to be a part of and we are excited to do? Or are we shifting into, I don't want to call it used car sales, because I think that's sort of antiquated, but I'll call it furniture sales. Are we shifting into the furniture sales mentality where someone walks through the door and we just hammer them, get a deposit, no questions, we don't care who you are, this boat's best for you. That's not who we are. That's never been who we are, and that's never been what's gotten us to where we've accomplished what we've achieved so far. What's gotten us here is the fact that we do care about people, we do love what we do, and we do generate a relationship. So our first and fundamental point towards any interaction with any person still needs to be those same things, which is we are relationship driven, we're excited about what we do, and all we're here is to feature and benefit, meaning I'm not here to show you the widgets, I wanna show you how those are gonna benefit you so that you can have a great experience on the water and that your hard work and job that you go to every day so that you can afford this is so that you can have a good time and have fun and we wanna help you have fun, period. That's all we're doing. You know, We're just selling fun and that's how it needs to be approached. So if this is an obligation and something that you feel you have to do, not necessary. We don't need you. Go somewhere else. That's okay. It's just not our model. Our model is it's an opportunity and we're excited about it and we want our staff to be excited about it. And I think that you need to understand one thing that's rather important, which is the growth is not moving us into a position where we're losing touch with who we are. What it is doing is giving us the opportunity to do what we've always done, but better. And I'll expand quickly on that and then I'll close because I don't really expect this to be a super long dissertation for you guys and gals. What I mean by that is that when we first started this business and there was 15 of us, you know, no boat lines cared about who we were. It didn't matter. You, you didn't have enough horsepower to generate any interest from any what I've called in the past tier one boat lines, right? No one cared. Why would they? You're a small shop, small people, eh, you can't really do anything. As we grow and as we continue to expand and as we get a little bit more horsepower and it gives us some financial solvency and the ability to, do, to, to make these sorts of changes and decisions, what have we seen in transition? Well, we've seen that now we have Sailfish. We see that we now have Windy, which is, a, by the way, get excited about it. It's gonna be an amazing import brand. We are a dealer for them. We are bringing them in. Uh, it is for, matter of fact, it's borderline distribution. I don't wanna speak out of turn, but it looks like in the beginning, we're the only people in the United States for sure. So if you're unfamiliar with Windy Boats, look them up. They have phenomenal reviews, incredible quality, and it's another European boat line that we're importing. Why? No competition. 
We're, we don't want to, we need the F-150 of the boat lines that's going to turn over and be a faster turn. But we also don't like saturated boat market stuff where we are fighting to do 15% to 13% margin deals because they can go right up the road. They can buy a Rivalo or they can go right up the road. They can buy, you know, we, we want to move into a unique target that we have found with Axopar. And then our model is, is can we still continue to be more of a European boutique boat, boutique boat dealership that's offering unique solutions that are well constructed different and that are at, at good price points so that's the that's kind of the windy line but point being is that without this growth windy doesn't exist without this growth axopar doesn't exist without this growth we're back into day one which is we were selling founds ba donzi you know how many people buy those no one no one anymore but it was the only new boat lines that we could get then we got all big and Otsi and we ended up getting key largo hooray you know, I don't even think they build those anymore. Then we really got OT and we got Century. So my point being is that it's been a stair-stepping process, and the only reason that we keep elevating these stair steps is because of the growth. So we have no intention to slow down the growth curve. We have no intention to do less. We are constantly doing more. Roger and Jeff are constantly thinking about how can we further invest in ourselves and the company and how do we further solidify it and grow it. That hasn't changed. I've been here 10 years, and it's been the same thing for 10 years. So don't project that changing, but it does give us the opportunity to bring on better lines, to bring on higher uh, in terms of notoriety lines. And it also gives us the opportunity to continue to expand so that we can all be in a safer, stronger place. This is important because we don't want to lose who we are along that way. We don't want to lose what got us to where we are. We are painfully aware that we are not perfect and no one is. And we are painfully aware that there's a lot of adjustments we still need to make. There's a lot of things we still need to refine. There's a lot of uh, uh, procedures, operations, and policies that are going to be fluid and adjusting. What makes it difficult, of course, and we hope you understand, is that when you have constant growth, then the model is constantly shifting. What we did with 10 people and the model that we used with 10 people worked well with 10 people. But guess what? It doesn't work with 20. And then it doesn't work with 30. And then it doesn't work with 100. And now it doesn't work with 130. So because you're continuing to grow, it makes it very difficult to constantly refine and to constantly change, or rather to uh, constantly keep, keep in the same box. And let me just build this box really, really well because we're not changing the box. Our box keeps getting bigger. Okay, well, now we need to adjust everything. Okay, let's sure that, okay, now the box is bigger. So we ask you, of course, to you know, kind of be patient with us in this growth cycle. I know that there's some frustrations. We know that there's some good things that are happening. We know that there's some things that are aggravating that are happening. But you know, work with us on it because we need to continue to do this in an effort to continue to grow and continue to make the targets and the goals because the whole point is, is that the, if we can start getting into the interest level of all tier one boat lines and we can solidify some key territories and positions, it can put us in a position of strength versus a position of weakness, a position of dominance versus a, a position of being the submissive. And so we are poised to do that and we are doing it and we are crushing certain market segments and we are very excited about what we've done and we're very excited about the team that we've built that has created that opportunity so just wanted to let you guys know that we're very happy with what's happened in 2020 kind of give you a really 50,000 foot really quick overview kind of give you some real lofty targets that we're hitting for 2021 and then going forward, what I'd like to do is I'm probably going to loop in like a Roger or a Jeff at some point, and we can kind of go into specifics on certain things a little bit more. But I thought it was really important that you guys kind of get the opportunity to have a, a you know, most of you know me, most of you don't at this point. Heck, it might be a 50-50 split. But I wanted you to put a face to the voice and the aggravating emails that I'm sure you've received from me. And then I also want you to know that digitally, literally, and figuratively, my door is always open. And that if there's something going on in your area and you're not in the Fort Lauderdale location, no problem. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to work with your team leaders and we're going to get whatever it is sorted, resolved and fixed. And we're going to continue to help give you the tools that you need so that you can be successful in what you're doing so that we can all be successful as a whole. So don't want to belabor any points. Just wanted to kind of touch base and then kind of go into 2021 and let you know that my feeling on it is, is I'd like to be a little more interactive and it may have to be digitally given the, uh, frankly, the broad scope and uh, of how many people we have now. So thought it was more exciting than just an email. And this way, you, you know, you can just skip through the bar, get to the end and, you know, tell someone you watched it. So uh, appreciate your attention and your time today. Have a great day and let's uh, keep rolling 2021 and let's keep it going. Thanks guys.